this is a non-divisional game, so it does mean less. It's not a double whammy if you lose. Um, can you talk about how you approach? I mean, obviously, as Adam said, every game is important. The next game on your schedule is the most important game on your schedule, as Kirk would say. But uh, do you approach this game any differently from a standpoint that, hey, you're, you're playing in a whiteout, you're playing at night, it is the Big Ten opener? Does Iowa go about anything differently this week? Well, I would hope we would start with, let me say it this way. If we can identify a weakness in their defense, uh, something that we can count on that they align a certain way, if we can find any vulnerability out there from looking at, at today's game in, in particular, I would hope we would use those plays early on, even in the first quarter, to give ourselves the best chance to jump out on Penn State. If there's a play that fits that bill, there may not be. But we've got to turn over rocks left and right to try to find something, some vulnerability that nobody's exploited yet. Uh, you might you might suggest, Corey, that how often do you actually find that? If you look long enough, you find it against just about anyone. But you got to look really long and hard to find it. And when you find it, you, you're thinking, I can't wait until we do this to them because I'm – actually confident that we can get this done with this play. And it is gratifying when you run a play like that, and sure as hell, it's it's there. And it can give you an early advantage that maybe gives you a better chance to beat a really tough opponent on the road. If we can do anything to discourage uh, the crowd, then that's, that's a big step in winning the game, to be able to get off to a good start and take the crowd out of the game as best we can. I think back to 2000, 2009, Adam, and you probably remember this game as well. Tom mentioned it with the Adrian Claiborne block pump. Not many people remember that uh, Daryl Clark had a huge bomb down the field for a touchdown to start that game and talk about a whiteout gone nuts. And Iowa managed to find a way to win that game on the road, Don, despite the whiteout, despite the early fireworks, but that's typically not a recipe for disaster. And or it typically is a recipe for disaster on the road in those circumstances. Iowa did start out slow today, so that will be uh, something to clean up for next week, Adam. Yeah, I think some of the wildest games I've seen in the last five years or so have been Iowa versus Penn State with the I last agree. second, fourth down pass that they completed on us. Uh, I mean, it's just incredible games. I, I have no question that we're going to play them tough. Um, you know, if I was betting on them, I probably wouldn't bet the money line on the Hawks, but I think it's a game that we're always in. Sam says, how will we fare running the ball if KJ and Jazz are out? Don, how would you evaluate – Iowa's chances of running the ball if the running back core is LaShawn Williams, Kamari Moulton, Terrell Washington Jr. I realize it's a lot of pressure to put on a couple of freshmen, but based on what I saw today, I think they're gonna they're gonna represent just fine. I would expect LaShawn to get the majority of the snaps just simply because he's played in some big games and the other guys have not. Uh, so in that regard, I would bet LaShawn would get the majority of the carries. And then uh, the two freshmen would be available to sub here and there. Um, and still give us with good production at running back. I think that's an entirely possible. I was impressed with those two freshmen. And LaShawn's numbers, of course, 12 for 145 yards. So that's this a good sign. Uh, Bo in the chat says he believes Penn State could be vulnerable. Still with a young quarterback, young running back under the lights. Takun goes on to say, what should Iowa's game plan be against those guys? I think, Don, uh, I've been saying it for a long time that I feel more comfortable with a veteran like Cade McNamara than I would with a guy like Drew Aller going on the road. But Drew Aller is at home under the lights, and he's right. a five-star kid who's looked really good, and that offense has looked really good, as has their defense. How do you, uh, how do you game plan against Penn State? Let me give you some reason for optimism. I'm looking at the stats now from the game. Uh, I had an idea that it might be like this. If you, you heard me talk about the first part of the game, they turned the ball over three times in not much more than a, one quarter of play. And yet even then, the score was only 13 nothing. Uh, they held them to field goals twice. The third time, they managed to score. So the defense was hanging in there at that point in the game, I thought. Here's the part that surprised me a little bit. Final stats. Penn State was plus five on turnovers. If you're plus five on turnovers, you're going to win the game every time. Right. I don't know. I can't remember a time when somebody was plus five on turnovers and lost the game. And four of um, those were interceptions thrown by Luke Altmaier. Correct. 
So that's encouraging. They were plus five, and and yet when you look at total offense, Penn State had 383 on 77 snaps. Illinois had 354 on 73 snaps. So despite turning the ball over, they did move it. So that's encouraging that they moved the ball that effectively against Penn State. I realize a lot of the yards might have come late when the game was already settled. I don't know. I don't know that. I suspect that's probably true. But the bottom line is, and something we're good at is not beating ourselves. It all starts against Penn State. We better not turn it over because they're not likely to turn it over much at all either. And any kind of edge on turnovers, of course, must be greatly with chances of winning the game. So we know we have a chance of winning the punting game. Uh, I find it hard to believe that their kicker is any better than ours, that's for sure. We like – we like Cooper returning punts, you know, so we got a lot of tricks to talk about. And our defense, of course, is historically not going to give up many big plays. So an experienced quarterback going against a, a veteran defense in so many ways, um, playing a third place, but there's still a lot of pressure on them. And let's face it, if we get off to a good start, then the pressure does mount, you know, because the crowd's irritated that the game's not playing out as it was supposed to. And maybe the fans are a little bit disgruntled. And that quarterback really hadn't experienced much of that yet. Right. So let's make let's make him uncomfortable by getting off to a good start. If we can win on turnovers, get off to a good start, uh, not have to play from behind because I don't have great confidence in our ability to come from behind. But if we can start fast and, and maintain that and be hanging around until the fourth quarter, then at that point the pressure's really on. Penn State. After all, they're the ones that are supposed to be able to defend their home field. Without having watched the game, and I'll go back and watch the game before I come out with my official preview this week, Don. Looking at the box score, the the stat sheet alone, a couple maybe things that Iowa can take advantage of. Penn State was mediocre on third down. I mean, they were 7 of 18. They were okay. Um, Not great. They only threw the ball 5.9 yards per pass attempt. Right. That's not great, right, Don? I mean, they ran for 164 yards, had seven penalties. You're right yeah. about you're right about the turnovers thing. That was the different. That was the difference in the game. You, you can't five turnovers. And they only lost by 17. Five, you know, being minus five on turnovers, Don might in a typical game result in losing by 30. Um, Correct. They only lost by 17. Now they were on the road, or excuse me, Illinois was at home, uh, lost by 17. And Iowa, of course, will be going to Happy Valley, but uh, I'm with you. Play clean, uh, avoid turnovers. Cade cannot, uh, you know, those two passes that he he got picked today, those are things he's got to clean up. If you're Kamari Moulton, I know he's a true freshman. You can't be fumbling on the goal line. I know you can't play a perfect game, but those are things that you got to be looking at and cleaning up. Very true. You know, let's, let's begin by not beating ourselves. Something we're good at. 